See, because in my eyes, they want it both ways. They want the views. They want the money. They want the fame. But then we want the respect. Yeah, respect us. We're real ghost hunters. You don't get both. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah, super cool. I love that mask, man. That's a really fucking, fucking cool ass mask. I bet you're a cool motherfucker. Oh yeah, I'm like the coolest guy I ever lived. Uh, <laughs> We're back. Oh yeah, that felt good. Hey, good to see you. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, that was stupid. So the other night I was talking to a good friend about ghost hunting, YouTube, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we were talking about the fake ghost hunters and the real ghost hunters and everything in between. And it came up again, if you're gonna fake your evidence, maybe you should put a disclaimer at the beginning of your video that says this is entertainment, scenes are staged, blah, blah, blah. And then the conversation kind of evolved into, well, they probably don't wanna do that because they'll get less views. I think that's the fear. Tell me when it's over! So, you know who popped in my head? Was Mr. Tim Morozov. And if you don't know, Tim Morozov is a, I think it's a Russian YouTuber who does amazing videos. In his videos, he has things moving. He has some creepy ass videos. And I've watched some new ones. He has definitely evolved. If you're thinking about clicking away, hold on. I got something for you. So I was like, you know what? Just to see what kind of views old Tim was getting over there. I went to his channel and look at this. And as you see here, I believe all of his videos are above 150,000. The guy is highly successful on YouTube. And check this out. This is what he has at the beginning of his video. Now the main part I wanted to show you was at the bottom where it says, the video is created for the purpose of entertainment and in no way claims to be real events. I love his disclaimer. I think all fake ghost hunters should have this at the beginning of their video. Now, would it affect their views? I'm not sure, but it seems like he's very successful. So I believe the current thinking is if I do that, I'll get less views, that means less money, and that's not good for my wallet. Or, option B, it could be an ego thing. They don't want to come out and say that they're fake, because that's going to make them look like a fake. What? So what do you guys think? Do you think it's ego, or do you think it's the fact that it might hurt their, their wallet, or do you think it's both? This is what I don't understand about fake ghost hunters, okay? Like if I said, hey, hey Bob. Make it stop! Make it stop! Me and Bob are gonna go out tomorrow night. We're gonna go to a mausoleum. And we're gonna throw chairs around. We're gonna make stuff move. And we went out there and made it happen. In my mind, I would be like, man, I know somebody's gonna catch us doing this. I know somebody's gonna call us out for faking or something like that. I'm gonna assume that's gonna happen. If I really did that and I put it online, and if someone said, hey, I caught you, I can see your buddy in the back throwing the chair, you, you forgot to cut that part out or whatever it is. Me personally, I would be embarrassed and I'd be like, oh my God, Bob, they caught us. Bob, they caught us, man, what do we do? Do we delete the video? That's probably what I would do. Do we just not say anything or what do we do here? But not these guys, not all of them, a lot of fakers, a lot of fakers you will never hear from. There's certain ones, I won't name them, that you'll never see get involved with any of the uh, naysaying. But certain ones, oh yes, oh yes, in debunking, we know who those guys are. They pound their chests and get so fucking mad. What are you fucking mad at, bro? You faked your evidence. This is what kills me. This is what kills me. They want to make fake videos. They don't want to put a disclaimer at the beginning. And then when they get caught, it's... Fuck you, how dare you? That kind of mentality, you know, if you think about that, and a lot of these guys, 
They want to get personal. They want to try to dox you. They want to try to personally attack you. And it kills me because at the end of the day, you know you're fake. Yet you're on the attack to defame somebody just because they caught you. So that's what makes some fakers really bad to me because it's almost worse than the faking itself. You know, you fake a video fine, but then when you get caught, it's how you act afterwards. You come out and attack debunkers. You use the word toxic. I'm so sick of hearing the word fucking toxic, really. And I think it would categorize it a lot better if you put at the beginning of your video that, hey, you know what? This is entertainment. Some scenes are staged, blah, blah, blah. And that way we would know you're a fake channel. And you know what? Here's the advantage of that. You could fucking go ham then. What? Instead of just having the occasional, you know, REM pod go off and maybe something move across the floor, you could have fucking demons running around. Think about it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> you could fucking go all out and make something really scary. But no, no. They want it both ways. They want to come out here make fake videos, get caught, and then cry, oh, toxic behavior, way we got caught faking. See, because in my eyes, they want it both ways. They want the views. They want the money. They want the fame. But then we want the respect. Yeah, respect us. We're real ghost hunters. You don't get both. Because I have seen this before a couple years ago. We had a big YouTuber argue with me and Joe on Facebook trying to tell Joe you need to grind harder J Joe grinds plenty oh really but this youtuber is really big on YouTube telling Joe oh if you did your thumbnails like this and you grind it harder you could be like me that's insulting because Joe didn't have the advantage of fucking throwing chairs in the video and using string to pull everything. That's why you are where you're at, and that's why Joe is where he's at. I'm not saying Joe's down here, I'm just saying the difference in between having millions of subs compared to thousands. Look at Tim Orzov. He puts a disclaimer at the beginning of the video and then does some amazing videos, guys. And I heard, uh, I've heard other debunkers talking about him before. They, they love his videos. So it's actually okay to fake on YouTube. It's okay. As long as you put the disclaimer. Well, la de frickin' da! Now, now here's the thing. It's your channel. You don't have to. Nobody can force you to put a disclaimer. That's the truth. But hey, don't come out here and expect to silence everybody because they have an opinion about your fake ass videos. Like I say, if you want to rake in the dough, have demons week after week and have things moving around and Ouija boards catching on fire, skinwalkers every weekend, fine. Do you, boo. Do you. But don't expect to get the respect from the real investigators. And I'm hearing this whole thing of like, well, you have to use these titles because that's how you, that's how YouTube works, bro. Don't you know? That's how YouTube works. True. True. Do your thing. But... At the end of the day, it's what kind of channel do you want to have? Do you want to be looked at as a, as a respectable investigator? Or do you want to be looked at as an entertainment channel? It's up to you. It, you can do either one. It really depends on what kind of crowd you're trying to attract. I know me and a lot of other people, when they see a name of a video, they pretty much know immediately what kind of video they're going to be watching. And sorry for the ramp. This whole thing is basically about Tim Morozov is ex an example of how this can work. Put the disclaimer in, go fucking ham. If you don't want to, fine. You still want to pull strings and put in masking and stuff like that, cool. But just expect to be called out eventually. You don't live in some kind of like, you know, imaginary shield, you know, fucking alligator moat that surrounds you that we can't fucking see you or have an a fucking opinion. And last time I checked, we're still allowed to have an opinion. Everybody knows I hate fucking apps. I fucking hate apps. I hate apps. I hate the DR60. I hate the spirit box now, okay? <laughs> but just because somebody uses them doesn't make them fake. To me, it all comes down to intent. I know some people now that really do believe in spirit boxes. They really believe in fucking apps. I know some people that love the fucking DR60. That's awesome. And they're really trying to get responses any way they can. Through flashlights, the DR60. They're really trying, and in their mind, they think they're communicating. 
I'm sorry. I'm just ranting now. I know. I'm just fucking ranting, but... Shut the fuck up! There's a difference between some channels that go in and use these things to their advantage that are totally fake. And when you've been doing this long enough, you know, you know the difference. The debunking community is not stupid. The debunking community watches everything. It's basically a community full of thousands of debunkers now because they know from watching these videos what to look for now. Let's watch some fucking Tim Morris off, guys. Here's that beautiful statement at the beginning. Let's hit play. I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> Check this out. Check this out. Here we go. Watch this. It's a small ass planchette. Some of the stuff he does is very complex. And that's the cool thing. I don't have to think about debunking. I don't have to worry about that crap, you know? But just, just the point is, is that he can do all kinds of stuff and it's very elaborate. And that's what I respect even more because he's not just some dumbass going into a room and just throwing something, you know? That's so lazy. I do not fucking respect that at all. You go into a room and you spin the fucking fan blade on top of the ceiling. That's the laziest fucking thing you could do. It's insulting. It's low-hanging fruit. You don't plan anything out. You don't bring any devices. You don't think it through. You just go in there. You reach up and you fucking hit the damn fan blade. And then you go, oh, look at this. Oh, no. Zero respect for that. Or the classic, you know, was that there before? Was that chair? That's where that chair wasn't there before. How did it get there? No. But unfortunately, millions of people buy it. I'm still shocked at what people actually believe in the video. I really am. Back to Tim Moore's off real quick. This Ouija board, this Ouija board is just fucking going off, man. <laughs> I'd rather watch this any fucking day over a lot of the crap that gets debunked over and over and over to a fucking oblivion. You know what I mean? This is really good stuff. And this is mild. Usually he has fucking like furniture moving. Some of this crap, I don't even know how the fuck he's doing it. It's pretty amazing. Oh shit. That's a creepy shot. Yeah. Oh shit, dude. <laughs> wow, I'm fucking masked, dude. That one got me. The, the bass in these speakers, it says, that's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was fucking awesome. I actually got a real jump scare. See, man, that's... Okay, see, that, that's my fucking point. I'll go ahead and stop it there. That's my fucking point, man. Jesus. I, I cut some out of those sitting there watching. But please go check out Tim Moore's off if you never have. I just proved to myself I got a fucking jump scare from watching him. And I know he's fake. Just like when I go to a fucking... I've heard this actual argument before. And I've gotten this comment a bunch of times in the past. I love this comment where they go... What does it matter if it's fake? You go to the movies, don't you? Yeah, asshole, because it's fiction. I know it's not real. And I fucking still get scared. Oh boy, sorry. <laughs> Tim Morris off is where it's at. He has a great idea. And I respect him so much. He's fucking successful. I hope he's making lots of fucking money. And he's being fucking honest with his subscribers. Unlike the fakers. Who are making lots of money off of deceiving the very people that watch them and pay to watch them. 
So guys, please let me know what you think in the comments section. I'm really interested to see what you guys think with this whole subject. I will put the link in the description for Tim Morozov's channel as well. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button for me. YouTube really loves that for some reason. Just wanted to say too, we have a great community. You know, we get a lot of crap, but our community is the best. We have a lot of good hearted people in our community that are just searching for real answers. And I know our community is not fucking perfect by, by far. I don't think there's a community that is. Are debunkers perfect? No. Debunkers make mistakes. I've made mistakes. I've admitted when I make mistakes. Anyway, if you're still watching, holy shit, congratulations. You made it. And I will see you next time. Oh, yeah.